Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Had to take a three day break uh, of running errands, but whatever. But you're definitely going to be in for a treat because since we're still in the middle of October, I'm going to be reviewing a zombie romantic comedy that came out 15 years ago already, 2004, simply called Shaun of the Dead with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, the stars of the TV series Space, that's from BBC, that's also directed by Edgar Wright. And this was the first film of the Free Flavor Canetto trilogy, which includes Hot Fuzz and The World's End. Yeah, those movies. And since then, you know, they went on to do a lot of movies, uh, Either way together, or sometimes not together. You know, like I know Simon Pegg had went on to do the Mission Impossible film, yeah, the later ones, and he also went on to do other comedies like One Fat Boy Run, How to Lose and Alienate People, and so on and so forth. He was also in Ready Player One. And Nick Frost was in a movie called Attack the Block, and I know they or many other films he's done, or subletters. But of course, both Simon Pegg and Nick Frost had appeared in a film that's not directed by Edgar Wright, called Paul. But I wish that was part of it, but hey, it was cool to see both of them in a whole different comedy. You know, about an alien. <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, it's a story about Sean you know, who's a uh, salesman at an electronics store who lives with his friend, Ed, and um, also joins in with his roommate, uh, Peter. Um, he has a girlfriend named Liz, uh, joining in with um, their, her roommates, uh, Diane and David. Um, Sean has a mom, Barbara, along with his stepfather, uh, Philip. And then you have all the rest of the people. They're going around trying to survive a zombie apocalypse that's happening in London. Yeah. So this is a satirical comedy that's like all the George A. Romero uh, zombie films. You know, like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Day of the Dead. I mean, even the Land of the Dead. And of course, Survival of the Dead or Diary of the Dead. It's um, so on. Um, of course, you can even see George A. Romero's quote here saying, An absolute blast, director Don did. <laughs> yeah, God was his soul, though, because he's no longer with us. But, but he was a legendary uh, horror director. Not only worked on the zombie films, but he also had worked on movies like Creep Show, the horror anthology, and he also did um, Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, TV series, yeah, he was the executive producer, along with uh, along with John Harrison, Richard P. Rubenstein, all the rest. Okay, but this was the comedy that did introduce me to them, and I, ever since I saw this movie, I just never got tired of it. I just, I just keep on laughing, and and it just goes on. A lot of zombie gore in there in the mix, and it has everything that you really appreciate what they're going for. Even though they, they even said to themselves that this is not a horror spoof. I mean, this is more of a satirical take on on zombie movies. So this actually plays it on its own. So that's a good thing. And yes, it has all the special features included. <laughs> yeah. So you have like the missing bits, which has some outrageous outtakes with deleted scenes that's not shown in theaters, of course. You actually got raw meat, never before seen casting tapes, which includes Simon Pegg's uh, video diary, which is really cool because you get to see him just you know, spending time just filming where they were going to shoot that particular scene. And uh, <laughs> yeah, with uh, Nick Frost joining in. And I, I love the moment in the video diary where they had to <laughs> inject at him and has to show his ass. And then, and then they're trying to get ready for that famous scene where they're about to whack uh, those two couples. Well, well, one was a 
a supermarket employee, and then the other one is just the one that was going after it. Yeah, they had to whack it, whack both of them with uh, a cricket and a <laughs> shovel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it even shows the special effects uh, comparisons because, yes, they did use a green screen effect, um, some CGI uh, gore in the mix. and uh, But most of it is practical because they did use latex and makeup effects and all that stuff. They even used those, uh, those eye contacts. Um, all painted it to make it look like like they're not exactly who they are yeah all of that stuff I mean it's all done practically but with a mix of CGI though and yeah you got TV bits with uh, Coldplay you know doing like an interview in the scene where they're just um, channel surfing uh, yes uh, he was doing the a zombie aid sort of like uh, band aid or live aid type for uh, zombies um, which is cool they, they also had actually had the clips of of a local talk show <laughs> which I thought that was pretty funny too uh, they even got the uh, uncensored commentary which has the cast and crew yeah including Simon Pig and and Edgar Wright because they were both the writers for the film they even got the zombie meter, yeah, which shows the zombie trivia. That, that was really cool, and a whole lot more. So. That's what you get for this um, nice DVD. It could also have that on the Blu-ray as well too. So they they ported all the features. Nice HD. Oh, and just to note, this was um, the first movie that was. Uh, that was released by the Revive uh, Rogue Pictures, uh, as you can see right there on the top, even on the back. <laughs> yeah, this was a company that first released films like uh, Orgasmo with um, with uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, you know, the creators of South Park. You know, they did a NC-17 uh, superhero comedy. Uh, it, it was at the time when the company was um, under the distribution of a polygram film entertainment before Universal bought them out along with Seagram and Son and then the the company got shut down after their last release which was Cherry Falls and then they revived the company uh, through uh, Focus Features so, so they finally brought the company back until Relativity Media took over and you know they and they started releasing like several films from them Simply known as Rogue, and um, but they haven't released that many movies uh, for years. Uh, I think the last one they released was uh, was Strangers Two, because you know, they released the first one. I don't know. Well, anyway, but well, let's get to the review. It stars Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Kate Ashfield, Lucy Davis, Dylan Moran. Penelope Wilton, Bill Nighy, Jessica Stevenson, Peter Sofonowick, Ralph Spall, Martin Freeman, yes, Martin Freeman from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and he went on to do the Hobbit films, the Hobbit trilogy. Reese um, Shearsmith, uh, Tamsin Gregg, uh, Julie Deakin, and Matt Lucas. It's written by Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, and it's directed by, once again, Edgar Wright. The movie begins set in London, England. We meet Sean, who's played by Simon Pegg, who's a salesman at a local electronics store called Fauré Electric. Yeah, and I guess that was probably named after the actor Ken Fauré. Yes, and he was also the actor who's not only from the movie Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead, but he was also, yeah, he's also in the remake as well that Zack Snyder directed. But he also went on to play Keenan Rockmore's dad in the TV show Keen the Kill. Yes, Roger. <laughs> okay, well, back to that. Um, he actually has no direction in his entire life. I mean, his colleagues totally disrespect him. I mean, they're not paying attention to him at all. 
and of course he does have a lot of red ink on his pocket you know, because of the pen you had trouble that's why everyone keeps saying you got red on you <laughs> um, especially when the, his stepfather uh, Philip played by Bill Nighy came around trying to explain about what's going on um, which he doesn't get along with and his girlfriend uh, Liz uh, played by Kate Ashfield um, suddenly breaks up with him you know they wanted to move on with their lives you know doing what they're doing but it didn't work out and he actually broke his promise so that's why he's trying to make it up for it by actually sending her flowers but didn't help and anyway Liz actually joins in with uh, Diane and David both played by Lucy Davis and Dylan Moran he wanted to take Liz to a local restaurant but it turns out that his his choice since nothing else didn't work out decided to go to Winchester because he thought this would be the perfect place but didn't feel like this was a good idea so that's what happened they broke up and so now because they failed to get all these dinner reservations and stuff so anyway he went to the Winchester and decided to um, hang out with his friend Ed who's played by Nick Frost I mean he was also um, his roommate to join in at his house he also has a roommate named uh, Pete who's played by uh, Peter uh, Safonowick uh, which I know he, he actually does go to work and, and stuff and then then he complains about what happened before we get to that so both Sean and Ed were just spending time. I mean, usually they go around just playing video games or doing all those other fun activities and everything. But they spent time at Winchester, you know, just and you know, talking about what just happened and how Sean and Liz broke up, and then 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 suddenly the the song "If You Leave Me Now" like, that's uh, played at random, <laughs> and then they decided to play some other song. So Ed was just trying to cheer him up, you know, try to just, you know, just going around drinking some beer and, you know, just playing some games and doing all this other stuff at Winchester before um, the place closed. And so then they just got outside, you know, they, they were just uh, singing the song by Grandmaster Flash, you know, White Lies, and and that's when, <laughs> then, then, then they begin to see something strange around um, town. Because they begin to notice something incredibly strange, I and mean, that's what Sean's been experiencing. Where, you know, like there was a car accident. There was like a, there's like several people like either falling or, or some, or even one uh, homeless person actually eating a pigeon. I mean, that sort of thing. Uh, but then, yes, they were both. <laughs> but anyway, both both Sean and Ed were just uh, singing to the beat and. Then you hear like one guy just making all these uh, <laughs> moaning noises and stuff. And, yeah. And then next thing you know, they they were playing the electro at their house. Yeah, on their um, all these LPs that they got in, until Pete got woken up at four o'clock in the morning, complains about a, a bite wound that he has from a mugger and also had a fight with um, Sean and Ed and and yes he even complained about ha having Sean leaving the front door open and he forgot to close it because <laughs> he's been doing that shit a lot yeah. um, yes and he also threw the electro um, record out, out of the window but by morning um, just when because he, he did actually uh, start sleepwalking and, and actually wrote something on the bulletin board. Um, and he actually slept and got up and then he realized what he wrote. And then next thing you know, um, there was a zombie apocalypse that was happening that overwhelmed the entire uh, city of London. But both Sean and Ed had been pretty slow to notice, I mean, since they have been drunk all this time. They actually encountered two zombies 
or they probably think of it as just ordinary people. Although, yes, they didn't want to say the word zombie. <laughs> yes, even yeah, Sean told uh, Ed, don't say that. Why? Because it's ridiculous. The, the Z word. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, the, the two zombies turn out to be a, a girl named Mary, who happens to be a, a supermarket clerk, which um, there's a background story about her. If you actually go on the, the DVD special features under Photo Gallery, which is the 2000 AD uh, magazine that they had, they actually show like a comic strip of how, um, how we got to see the character Mary. Yes, yeah, she was a supermarket clerk where she was being attacked by by a fat guy who's like bald and, and he's going around trying to um, make love with her or you know, rape her or something. And then suddenly uh, she picks out uh, a guy who's, who's feeling very ill. It looked like yeah, he was being bitten by a zombie and apparently he becomes one and starts and starts to bite her and then the next thing you know she got infected and then with the with the bite wound on her neck and then suddenly she bitten him and now together they're both zombies so that's how it happened what happened though was that um the, there was a scene of course where <laughs> where mary's about to attack uh, sean and then the ed was about to take two seconds to <laughs> to take a photograph at, at both of them and then later uh, they pushed her straight into the pole and that's where she got the hole straight from her body and she got out about to attack them and then <clears throat> and then the fat guy appears you know, all bold and already looking uh, grotesque and then suddenly uh, both uh, Sean and Ed decided to throw all these uh, records around <laughs> at them you know, taking all these songs like <laughs> like the Batman soundtrack or, or Sedate or any other uh, but that didn't help so then they had to take out uh, the cricket and the shovel so yes Sean took the cricket uh, Ed took the shovel and, they, and they, they just smashed the head because they just found out uh, for the news report that the only way to kill them is to smash the, their brains or or just shoot them in the head because it's instant death. So they just keep whacking it, whacking it, whacking it. Um, but then <laughs> they're just sitting around watching the news. Uh, well, he was at Ed and was having ice cream. Sean was just drinking coffee. Um, I guess I also forgot to mention that there was a scene which actually has a nice camera angle, a dolly shot here, and where he was just walking around, you know, going to the local grocery store where. He always likes to bring in some like some drinks or any other, and that's where he meets um, a store clerk uh, named Nelson. It's like a um, an Indian store clerk. Um, yeah, we're just trying to see where things are going. But then it, it also happened um, in the next scene too, where where there's like blood uh, hand handprints on the the freezer while he was getting the cokes and diet cokes and stuff yeah. um, <laughs> and, then, and then there's um, and yeah most of the time he does trip on the on the sidewalk too when he was trying to get to the store yeah there was one kid that actually threw um, threw a soccer ball at him there's another scene where they had like a dog owner coming by uh, like like a homeless person, actually giving him some change and all that. And also, the camera angles they use in the film, like they do those zoom in shots. You know, like they always zoom in, uh, like a fast uh, zoom in shots that they use. Kind of like what they did it in, in horror films sometimes. Like, like they always zooms in straight and they grab something, then they zoom into another shot and they grab something and then they zoom into the next shot. And yeah. yeah, like they did in movies like Cape Fear or any other. I thought that was pretty clever that they did it for Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they could do that in other films too. Now, let's get to what happened here. It was that 
So uh, Sean decided to come up with a plan to actually rescue his mom, Barbara, that's played by uh, Penelope Wilton, um, because then we begin to find out that uh, Philip might be um, infected after getting a bite wound, or what seems to be, so he might end up turning it into a zombie. Uh, he was also going to get Liz and out of the, the building and then along with uh, her roommates and friends and just and then decided to go to to their house and the whole thing will blow over. <laughs> um, well that's why well, it, it happened three times too I mean with Ed joining in um, but then next thing you know it turns out they had to change another plan was to go straight to Winchester and then the whole thing will blow over. <laughs> So that's that's their actual plan. I mean, first um, they have to drive their car, but then all these zombies comes around, and they have to move around as soon as they can. They have to move as fast as they can. They had to run over them. Then they finally made it to Barbara's house, so that way that way you'll be able to find where she's at. Try to also find out if Philip. Um, has been bitten or did turn into a zombie, but it turned out he wasn't. So, but yes, he was. Um, he was getting ill for a while, and then, um, then there were some complaints about uh, the fact that he's not getting along with, and then he was also going to threaten him with a knife, but then, well, that didn't happen. So then afterwards, um, <laughs> both uh, Barbara, Philip, and Sean decided to go. Um, straight back to the car which said at this rate the car was a the car was the Jaguar Serene B12 because um, it actually crashes uh, it was actually Pete's car by the way called the Renault uh, Magane yeah, the red car and then decided to ride along and go straight to uh, Liz's apartment as soon as it can, and already it's being filled with zombies going around, and while uh, Diane and, and David are still with her, and so then uh, uh, Sean had to uh, go up on, on top of the window because he couldn't go inside of the door. Couldn't let him in, actually, like what happened before. So he had to go up and try to rescue uh, Liz and as well as the two, and they. And they did try to escape from all these uh, zombies, and they went inside the car. So they drove off. Philip did try to make peace with Sean before he becomes a zombie, because yes, because uh, one zombie uh, came by and actually bit his neck already, just before they they ride along. And uh, yeah, he died, and he became one. And then they escaped from the car, and then. They, they continue to, to go on foot, uh, sneaking through backyards and, you know, through, like, fences around, you know, going from, from one place to another, and even the playground. They spotted one the zombie that came from the door. And then they, they come up with another plan to actually try to find a way to go straight into Winchester. Sean began to find out that, yes, the entire street is filled with them. It's like tons of them. So another plan was to actually have um, Diane uh, pretend to become one of them so that way they could fool them. So yes, this is where she actually uh, performs like how they actually uh, how to act like a zombie and, and all that. And and yes, uh, this was kind of like how they did it in the movie Warm Bodies. Yeah, Yes, they did it first though. <laughs> Because uh, Warm Bodies was, was like that too, you know, which is a zombie love story, of course. <laughs> That's another story. Um, but anyway, so they they pretended to be zombies just so they could try to get through Winchester, but they had some trouble getting in. I mean, Sean was, was the only one who noticed that there was a back door, so that way it'd be safe, because the entire place was locked. But then the day just... Uh, took out a, a chair and just broke through the the window because now that's going to distract them 
So then Sean had a plan to actually distract the zombies by actually following them by giving them the slip. Uh, if you saw the uh, the plot holes um, on the DVD, they'll explain how he did it. Um, and yeah, they'll do the same for Diane too, on how she escaped and what happened to her. They did the same for Ed too, but yeah, I know I'm, I'm getting over the place. There's going to be spoilers in this review, so of course. Um, so once they uh, went inside Winchester, yeah, and Sean came back and hoping everyone was okay. I know Dave was, was complaining about this and then next thing you know they're trying to find a way to put the electricity back on hoping things will work um, but as long as they don't distract the, the zombies because they might come back. I mean that's what he found out uh, when he was at the back uh, when he was in the, uh, the basement trying to turn on the, the power, that's when he found out that the zombies were on the back door. So yeah, they turned the TV on and, and there was all this standby from every network because of because of the because of what's happening. And then next next thing you know they they actually turn on the machine, which is the the casino machine that he that Ed plays and um, then there's also the there's also the uh, the music player, and it plays all all songs at random, and that's where they play the song by Queen called "Don't Stop Me Now." Yeah, Freddie Mercury. And that's when the the zombies came around, and they thought a, another plan was to actually have them kill them with uh, <laughs> with uh, pool sticks, and just. Just whacking them with it. Yes, they had to whack the the owner because the owner of uh, Winchester became a zombie. So they they were just whacking them. They're trying to kill him. Then they had to take out the uh, Winchester rifle. I mean, at first they thought this was just uh, <laughs> part of a, a gif, but it turns out that yes, it does shoot. And then there's actually bullets that they found, and they're trying to f they try to shoot them, but didn't help. And this is the biggest one too. Was then we begin to find out that Barbara had been bitten by the zombie, and suddenly um, she was dying A after giving Liz and Sean the blessing. And yes, she even found the the, the flowers that that was thrown away, which I know it, it turns out the flowers was actually supposed to be for her, even though he was going to give it to Liz. But what happened was, though, was that David was attempt to shoot her because he didn't realize that it's not uh, it's not her mom anymore. Yeah, kind of like what happened with uh, with Philip too, because it's not. So I know they're going to kill him anyway, and they did. He was attempt to shoot just to tell them that um, just to tell them that it's not going to be their mom anymore. I mean, she's going to become a zombie. But Sean tries to stop him, and, and the rest started arguing with each other, like Ed, Diane, and Liz. I mean, they were arguing, for, thinking that David actually hated Barbara, and that's why he's doing this. But no, he doesn't. He's, he's just trying to explain to him that we begin to find out that Sean was accused, actually accused David of being in love with Liz, that Diane was fully aware of, but then Liz was trying to stop the arguing. Yeah, even though, yes, he did call him a twat or a twit or whatever. So then he told Sean to actually shoot Barbara anyway once she becomes a zombie and, and did. And that's when Sean punches David and, you know, then he just, he just couldn't take it anymore. He decided to just commit suicide by just going straight to to the window and that's where the zombies have broke in and, and David has been disemboweled, yeah, he got ripped apart, took out all of his intestines out and then yeah, all of his body parts coming out too and and that's when the Diane grabs the David's leg and starts to rush in, 
into a horde full with all these zombies. But we did find out what happened to Diane, though. Um, again, plot, plot holes. I mean, she actually escaped from when all these zombies, you know, attacking them with, with Dave's leg. Then she climbs up up on top of the tree and hoping that the whole thing was over. Yeah, because all the all the, the SWAT team came around killing all of them. So yeah, so now we know where she she's been all this time. So she did survive. Um, then um, so yes, yeah, so all the zombies appeared, all attacking them. You know they got they got the guns trying to shoot their heads. They keep miss Sean keeps missing. Then the Pete already a zombie because he was uh, at the beginning too. You know when he was taking a shower. Then um, he actually appears and then. And then suddenly bites um, Ed, and another zombie bites uh, Ed to his uh, arm. And then uh, Sean actually had to take a bottle of alcohol and start to pour it around the, the stool, uh, the counter. And, and then then he realized that the bullets were on top. Then it starts shooting around and <laughs> shot the, that one the zombie woman and, and all the rest. And then, then they had to go all the way down to the cellar before just to hide out hoping they'd be safe and then but then both um, both Sean and Liz decided to uh, to leave while while Ed was still down in the cellar hoping that he'll be able to kill the rest of the zombies before he, he escapes and it did explain that yes he did escape and he went straight into uh, the, the garden and he stayed there, which I think Sean did find him. That was in the plot holes, number three. And yes, he was already, and he became a zombie later on. So he's at the, so he's inside the the garden room, where he's playing video games uh, with Sean. You know, when both uh, Sean and Liz were together. Um. Also to note that yes, uh, the army actually came, and yes, the entire army, the entire team, just going around killing all these zombies around, and because I know both uh, Sean and Liz had escaped from the cellar because there was a secret passage. Um, uh, you also meet, um, you also meet like the entire team too, like Yvonne and. And the rest, I mean, they were like them. They, they, they were surviving too, and they're just, they actually sent out the team of armies, so now they know they're, they're going to survive too. So, so the only ones who did survive are Sean, and, are Sean, Liz, and Diane, and somewhere out of sight. And but Ed, of course, is just a zombie. So, so they're just playing video games like Time Splitters. Yeah. Okay. I know, I know. I'm going over the place with with this, but I, I just want to have fun. Um, but it's always been definitely one of the the funniest comedies ever made for its time, and and it still holds up 15 years later. I mean, no doubt about it. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were both hilarious together. I mean, they definitely work well, and and rightly so, because any movie with them together or without them. I mean, it's always fun to watch, and you know, I, I always love all their humor, the jokes, and all that. The supporting cast, like Kate Ashfield, yeah, she was beautiful. Great chemistry together between Peg and Ashfield. Um, Lucy Davis was funny too. Uh, Dylan Moran, I mean, at times he acted like a wimp, sort of a jerk, but at least now we know. Um, he was. Uh, at times was um, well. At times he could be an asshole too, but then then you realize. I mean that you know he was frustrated because he had to deal with work and have all that. <laughs> um. Uh, Bar Barbara was sweet. Uh, played by Penelope Wilton. I mean, just sad about what happened to her. I mean, it, it was a pretty sad scene too about what happened to her and. It was a bit of a sad scene with Bill Nighy too as Philip. I mean, when he begins to explain 
uh, the real problems here, the real truth about that. Because we also learned that Sean's uh, real father died a long time ago when he was a kid. And that's why, uh, that's why Barbara had to marry Philip. Because he figured he needed some time for her life. And that's all. Okay. Um, anyway, I also learned that uh, this was actually inspired by an episode from Space called Art. Because I think this is where they came up with the idea because they were playing the Resident Evil and all this other stuff that plus they, they had to fight off against a zombie apocalypse that was going around so it was a huge evasion so that's why they came up with this idea to turn this into the movie Shaun of the Dead and I guess in a way um, since they loved the, the George A. Romero zombie films that they wanted to do it on their own that's based on the fact. I also love um, those moments too where they're like channel surfing and that's where they begin to see like all these uh, shows like for example there was a game show where they have all these zombies you know trying to to make it into the uh, <laughs> make it into the finish line yeah I know they're like rolling around then there's like the, the talk show where where um, where a girl was um, hanging around with uh, her boyfriend, or at this rate, her husband. I mean, at first, uh, he started out um, just not paying attention to her, but then let, next thing you know, she, he becomes a zombie. <laughs> yep, it's all shot in London, and they did all the special effects. I mean, the makeup effects, you know, how they created the zombies, and all these extras that they got to, to look to look at the part, they look like the zombies you see in, in all the, the Romero films. Uh, anyway, the movie was a huge hit um, at the box office. I mean, it was a hit overseas um, in the United Kingdom ever since it premiered. And uh, and when they came here to the U.S., I mean, it became a huge success that, that it would later become the entire trilogy, which is known as the Flea Faber's Canetto Trilogy. So that's why we got films like Hot Fuzz, which is a take on Buddy Cop Pictures, and The World's End, which is a take on the apocalypse that's happening, you know, the end of the world. Kind of like where we had This is the End. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, um, it's a fun, hilarious comedy. I, I couldn't stop laughing, and I'm glad to see that a lot of uh, a lot of horror icons out there, like Stephen King and even the Peter Jackson too. I mean, they 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 all enjoy the film so much that they really praised it too. I mean, Stephen King actually gave the film a ten. Um, he even said it was destined to be a cult classic, which rightly so. Um, yeah, Peter Jackson just. Uh, actually gave it uh, it's on the back that that this was the most entertaining film of the year and even Peter Travers loved it <laughs> that's Shaun of the Dead <laughs> and I give the movie five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye